friends welcome to hack of the day part 3 now i was thinking uh, how i could begin showing you how encoders are written and i thought for the very first video let me show you something really really simple and i've called this a poor man's encoder now this video is sponsored by security tube trainings Uh, if you'd like to take any of our courses, we have a bunch of them. Please have a look at securitytube-training.com. Okay, so how do you write the simplest encoder, right? And I thought about it. Well, I could have done ZOR, but you know it's quite uh, cliche simply because everybody does ZOR. So I thought, why not take a piece of shell code, invert it, and then write a decoder to reverse it back again. and then to run it and this is exactly what we are going to do in this video so let's run directly into the code now what i'm going to do is let me import just a second someone's at the door yeah and final.nasm contain the whole wget shell code if you don't remember what that is please refer to the previous video here it is as i mentioned we don't need the uh final elf we can just use the object file and be able to do this as well just extract the shell code everything looks okay so let me do our usual so on the 3 5 let me do our usual cut and here we go let me copy this out and let's just quickly verify this for a second so i'm going to open up again another file from the previous directory which allows us to verify our shell code Let's see. Paste that in. Compile. And fair enough, it works as expected. Right. Now we need to write the poor man's encoder. So let me just call it. encoder dot py and here we have our shell code let's paste our shell code in print length quick loop most of the code should be easy to understand there's there's really nothing much to it i'm going to print it in a mode so that i can use it easily with nasm
Okay. Oops. There we are. So the length is 112. Let's copy this out. Now I would need to write a decoder, right, for all of this. Let me call this decoder.nasm. Define global uh, you go down below here and define another label called reverse shell code and let me paste mine here. Fantastic. Now I need to write a decoder, right? So I'm going to use the jump call pop technique to get the address of reverse shell code in my decoder. Jump short. Just call decoder. Here is my decoder. And a simple pop ESI would go ahead and do the job. Now, there are two ways to approach the problem, right? One is we take this byte over here, swap it with the last one, then we move on here, swap it this this one in memory, and so on and so forth, right? The other way, interestingly, is just to use the stack. Because the stack grows from high memory to low memory, if we go ahead and push this on the stack then the top of the stack would basically reference this in reverse order and that's the trick we're going to use right so how are we going to do that it's actually quite simple uh, what we would do is write a little decode loop in here and then i'm going to set up a counter zor ecx ecx inside the ecx register if you remember, the length of the shell code was 112, uh, which you kind of, if you go ahead and quickly divide by 4, 112 by 4 would be 28, right? So if you're going to push 20, uh, 4 bytes at a time, we need to push everything 28 times to go ahead and push in 112 bytes. I'm going to move CL 28. Right, and now I need to do the whole decode where really all I'm doing is pushing this onto the stack. So I'm going to do a move EAX, D word pointed by ESI. Now remember that we need to go ahead and preserve the Indianness and all of that. So if we use it as is, then there's going to be a problem. The inversion won't happen as we desire. So we're going to use an interesting command called bswap give it the register so that it inverts the four bytes exactly uh, inside the EAX register and then we are going to go ahead and push EAX onto the stack and of course we have to add four to ESI to proceed further and all we're going to do is loop back to decode and continue for 28 iterations now after we come back right as you can clearly imagine what we would just need is a jump ESP because ESP would be pointing to our shell code but now in reverse order. That is all we would require. Does this look okay? Let me quickly check. Yep, looks okay. Now let me use NASM. Use object dump. It's a huge dump in here. 
and this basically would need to be again cut out just like what we've seen in previous videos just a second someone's at the door again sorry about that okay so let me go ahead and use decoder.o extract the shell code go back to shellcode.c paste this new shell code in compile then run fantastic so if you notice this worked we went ahead inverted the shell code and then in memory we went ahead and used the little stack game to invert it back again and now our shell code is running so guys really i mean to be honest this is how you can create an extremely simple shell code uh, encoder of course we will try and take up more difficult ones when we talk about av evasion when i take up windows based systems later on but keep that in mind right it's just a mathematical transformation and you need to be able to reverse that mathematical transformation that's it that's the only thing you need to keep in mind while you're building shell code encoders and decoders of course comments and feedback welcome please post your comments questions if you have any uh, and the rest of the audience should join in to respond to people's answers and things like that and post other scenarios any other ideas you guys may have right eventually i'm going to run out of ideas for this so help me out and lastly i think if you're new to linux assembly assembly language in general and have not looked at shell codes i would recommend having a look at the security tube linux assembly expert on the course page i've given out one hour of sample videos the whole course is a staggering nine plus hours so definitely do have a look thank you very much have a great day ahead